Okay, we are live. Are there any anti-inflammatory foods? Is there anything that we can do for arthritis? That is what I'm going to be just covering over the next three to five minutes. We did a Q&A yesterday on this and um, quite a few questions came in after that as well. And some people wish they were on it live. So I thought I'd just share it today because it's something that comes up a lot, like joint pain and, and you know, people talking about inflammation online a lot. You, you see a lot and some of the stuff is very misleading. Some of the stuff is quite good, but you know, Firstly, what is inflammation? If you just throw it out there, like people, you know, what actually is it? Like no one really like talks about what it actually is. So what are we, if we don't know what it is, what are we actually trying to help with, right? So if we think about inflammation in the body can be a cause of a lot of things, but some inflammation is actually very short term and actually is a good thing. Like when you work out, you do actually increase inflammation in the body. Um, but what we're probably more referring to is like the chronic inflammation, things that chronically, so for long periods of time that are, that are high. Now, so are there any anti-inflammatory foods in particular? Now, given that if you look at, um, you know, things like Alzheimer's, dementia, and given that there's no medication, no like vaccine or anything like that for that. And then if you look at some of the studies in say, like polyphenols, like, blueberries and grapes which are the, like the pigments that give it the color um, even coffee you look at some of the studies you think wow oh, that's quite interesting that these types of foods could potentially be beneficial in reducing inflammation um, and potential in terms of brain health cognitive function and all these things as we age not to mention potentially even joint health as well mushrooms things like that and it's like mm, that's that's quite fascinating isn't it and the key thing with this is there's no harm in doing that, right? There, there's no harm in increasing fruit and vegetable intake, really, and polyphenol in particular. Then you've got all the, the gut health benefits in there. And what I'm getting at here is, is foods and meals are very synergistic. You know, you can't, in, in research in terms of like medicine, they might look at, you know, give you one tablet and let's see what happens. With, with nutrition, we know we, we don't eat food necessarily we eat meals a combination of foods so they all work synergistically it's like you know you look at turmeric in terms of the anti-inflammatory research it's definitely some good stuff on there and it's probably worth taking if you have joint pain or anything like that um just probably speak to your gp in, in case of other medications etc but if you look at that it, it seems to absorb better with black pepper so you look at all these things it's like synergistic effect so what can you do well there's some research on um especially like arthritis that you know, feels like nightshades, tomatoes, peppers could, maybe could increase uh, symptoms of arthritis. And remember, this is about managing symptoms with your nutrition, with your diet. Um, I know one person who was on the Q&A yesterday said that you know, every time they eat tomatoes, they literally feel their hands the next day and they're like quite tight. Um, but then you've got to look at, you know, similar with like beans, uh, legumes, but then you've got to look at the benefits that you get from those foods probably outweigh the potential negatives unless you're getting severe unless you can feel the symptoms it's not like just avoid these foods forever because they may increase symptoms but it more so that you know let's have a look if it does do anything if not probably keep eating them because you're gonna get benefits hey pauline how are you doing give me a hello if you're coming in so you look at let's look at polyphenols first so you've got single foods blueberries grapes coffee you'll love that one um all these foods seem to have a good effect on cognitive health, um, potentially reducing inflammation, you know, polyphenols in general, certain cancers as well. Um, you look at kind of joints, then you're looking at, okay, what could you avoid in that area? Well, nightshade potentially may be an issue and these, these include like tomatoes, peppers and things like that. Is it worth a try? Well, maybe, you know, it's not exactly going to be the end of the world if you just had a little play with that. But also adding these foods in, what could you add in? That's also a very positive thing. On the other on the other end of the scale is increasing muscle and losing body fat. Like obviously it's a bit of a no brainer with that. But if you consider that if you're building muscle around the joint, you're protecting the joint a lot more. If you're also looking at losing body fat, similar effects happen. It's anti inflammatory to lose body fat. We know body fat around the organs can impact um, liver pancreas, insulin resistance, sensitivity. We also, there also seems to be a link with cholesterol and osteoarthritis. So 
if, there, if there's a cholesterol issue there, you might want to look at that if you get joint pain as well. But um, there's an interesting study which I will share um, as I talk around uh, on arthritis, uh, sorry, cholesterol, like how to reduce your cholesterol. Um, and it was, you know, percentages out, like things that you can do. So it was weight loss was one. One was increasing polyunsaturated fats, so that's like oily fish. And we know, again, that has an anti-inflammatory effect. So again, like synergistically, we're talking about healthy lifestyle. Sometimes you just got to step back and go, you know, I can go down a rabbit hole into this. So polyunsaturated fats, reducing saturated fat. So you could replace the saturated fat with polyunsaturated. So that might be, instead of frying with butter, I fry with olive oil. Is olive oil bad at high heats? Well, it might be carcinogenic if you burn food, but if you consider that the polyphenol content of olive oil and how that has essentially anti uh, effects on certain cancers and things like that, polyphenols seem to, then you could argue that you're kind of evening it out there and just generally don't burn food. Um, probably not a good thing. Uh, plant stanols, sterols seem to help as well. Like those, you can get them from the yogurts or um, just from lots of fruit and vegetables. That fiber in general bind to cholesterol, take it to the liver and help it go away, which is quite cool. Um, the other one is beta-glucan. Beta-glucan is a fiber in oats, also found in mushrooms, which again, can help reduce cholesterol. So just a few things you can take away from there. I hope that is helpful. Then we go into gut health, which I'm gonna go into on another day in a bit more detail. Um, but you look then at like Greek yogurt and, and things like that, total Greek yogurt or any brand, but not the style. Greek yogurt seems to have anti-inflammatory effects as well. Not to mention the calcium as well, which could help them with arthritis as well. So just a few things. Some, I don't want to go on all day with this, but a few things that I hopefully, hopefully will help you today. A bit more of a theory heavy one today. Anyway, hope that helps. Any questions, let me know. Remember, 20th of October, if you didn't know, 8 p.m., 20th of October, I'll be doing a free talk all on comfort eating, how to feel in control again and essentially overcome comfort eating. I'll be going over a few strategies with that. So it'll be about an hour long. You can watch the replay. If you want the link to that, just comment below comfort eating and I will get that for you. Take care and have an awesome Friday. Speak soon.